you will be Empress Chanel coming at you with another reading, right? So today I'm going to do a karmic versus non-karmic versus the mutual energy. I haven't done one of those readings in a long time for the collective. So we're just going to see um, what karmic, what the, what astrological energies that the karmics are pulling off of versus the astrological energies that the non-karmics are working off of. And then we're going to have mutual energy of both in the middle. How do they feel about one another or the mutual energies that they are um, ooh, okay, using in <laughs> negative or positive aspects, all right? All right, let me move that. All right, dear my loving and most highest vibrational angels, ancestors, spirits, guides, totems, and guardians, I ask that you cover me in the whitest light from the highest vibration. With the I ask that you cover my collective in the whitest light from the highest vibration as I give this download and as they receive this transmission. Gratitude, gratitude, and gratitude. All right, so we're going to do the astrological energies of the karmics first. Get them out the way, you know, so we can get that little dirty energy moved on out. <laughs> We usually get about three or four over here, maybe sometimes five. Pl Why am I not surprised they're pulling off a of Pluto energy? Y'all know Pluto is that kind of like obsessive. Um, we'll, we'll get to reading it. All right. So, astrological energy is the karmic. All right, we have Cancer, we have the Sun, and we have the 12th house. The Sun rules Leo, Cancer, and then the 12th house rules uh, Pisces, all right? Pluto is the ruler of um, Scorpio. So we have Scorpio, Leo, Cancer, Pisces energy right here if you want to look at the signs, okay? At the bottom of the deck, we have Saturn, Capricorn energy, all right? 202 on my clock, all right? It may not be the same on y'all's timer because of the intro and all that other stuff, but I'm just going to set the times as I see them on mine, all right? So, karmic energy. They are pulling off of Plutonian and Saturnian energy, the sun and cancer and 12th house energy. And y'all know 12th house energy is kind of like the hidden enemies um, energy, but we're going to go ahead and read off the cards, all right? Pluto, generational planet as well as the planet of death and rebirth, transformation and unexpected loss and restrictions, all right? So they're doing things uh, or they have been doing things or things in the past that were um, being very restrictive, being very secretive. Um, <clears throat> this could be since it's a generational planet, um, the word generational does mean that, you know, it spans across a, a generation. But for me, looking at that, that's um, kind of like family. OK. All right. The sign as well as the house Pluto is in. So Pluto sign in cancer in 12th house all right <laughs> so that's the energy that they're pulling off of right now or that they are all collectively um using this is the uh karmic energies that they're using all right the sign as well as the house Pluto is in can tell you a lot about how you will experience major transformations and the ways in which your karma, whether positive or negative, can manifest. Pluto is activated when there is a reluctance to learn karmic lessons. So these karmics are very reluctant to even learn whatever lesson it is that has been placed in front of them. OK, um, this represents the sun represents personality as well as their ego. So they could very well be in their ego. All right. It can turn karma it quickly based solely on the sign it is in and the aspects the house our sun sits in tells us so the house the 12th house tells us where we will shine or where we will attempt to assert dominance or be dominated while other planets as well as house placements impact our overall psychological emotional and spiritual makeup the sun is the foundation for our approach to life all right so we're going to go here to the 12th house because both of these we're talking about the 12th house all right so somebody could have sun um in the 12th house pisces all right 
The 12th house is the realm of secrets, like I said, subconscious and hidden enemies. Ruling over the feet as well as the mind, planets in the 12th house always indicate past life karma around mysticism, magic, and misuse thereof. 12th house placements also indicate an increased need for personality development as well as spiritual practice to support balancing of lower forces that can hijack the psyche. Cancer, the mother of the zodiac. So this could be involving someone's mother or someone who is a mother, okay? Um, um, or, yeah, basically that, <laughs> all right? Uh, uh, something about the home, okay, your roots. So this could definitely be, it's cancer rules over the roots. So that could be like root work. Um, someone may have tried to have done um, toward you, high vibrational or non-karmic being, okay? Cancer rules over the breast and stomach area. The karmic aspects of Cancerian energy include codependency, emotional instability, and manipulation and misuse of reproduction, feminine energy for selfish purposes. This could also be baby mama energy right here too. This card could indicate imbalance Cancerian energy surrounding you. Saturn, a gas giant, formerly associated with lead, with lead and alchemy. Saturn is the planet of karma and discipline. So we got a lot of karma going on over here with the karmics. <laughs> well, I mean, we are trying to pull on their energy right now, right? Hold on, let me move these over so you can see Saturn. Okay. Uh, the gas giant associated with lead and alchemy. Saturn is the planet of karma and discipline. Saturn, that's why it rules over the... Uh, it, it, you know, Capricorn rules Saturn because in a regular chart, without knowing where the signs are, where the houses are, you know, the exact placements and things like that, um, the 10th house is the Midhaven, which is said to be kind of like the, um, it's right across from Cancer, which would be the mother. Saturnian energy or, or Capricornian energy would be the patriarch energy or the father, um, so to speak. I hope that made sense. So we have mother and father. This could be somebody's karmic parents here. All right. That could be their hidden enemies. All right. Something that's coming to the light about that. Someone may have paid to have some sort of, um, or, you know, uh, got other uh, generations or family members involved in paying for having some sort of root work um, done or whatever it is. All right. So, uh, Saturn teaches lifelong lessons in order for us to fulfill our path according to our north node. The sign and house your Saturn is in will also tell you with whom and how you will experience karmic lessons. When you have many planets that are the same as your Saturn sign, there is an indication of being your own worst enemy. So they are their own worst enemy, not yours. All right. We have a lot of different signs right here. All right. So let's do the non karmic. You can turn TV on, just, you can put it low, if you want. <laughs> All right, non-karmic energy. Spirit. I just saw 808. That's music to me. So Sandalfin, Archangel Sandalfin, so, and I just saw 818. So definitely some something about Archangel Sandalfin and some sort of messages. Um being passed through music or some sort of influence or influencer, some sort of musical influence, okay? Non-karmic energy, house 12, look, wow. <laughs> so the karmics and the non-karmic energy are pulling out. I feel like maybe house 12 is coming out here on the non-karmic side because you all are um, highly intuitive. So you know that there is some sort of hidden enemy situation going on or that, um, or who your actual hidden enemies are here. Okay. This is just validation, a clarification. All right. But this is spirituality, transcendence, karma, sacrificial service and healing. So, um, the karmics, non-karmics are over here, uh, healing by closing out cycles, um, with, with hidden enemies, with, um, I just heard acceptance. So with accepting who these hidden enemies may be or are, all right? What, hidden enemy? 12th house is the, the moon right here. 12th house is not the moon. The moon rules cancer. But we're basically kind of pulling off the same. Y'all see this, right? 
but in a more high vibrational uh, non-karmic aspect of it okay so satisfy emotional needs nurture self and others so like I said highly intuitive over here with the moon all right we have Saturn wow <laughs> Saturn Taurus right here, okay? So trust, patience, and sensuality. And with Saturn right here, we have feeling restricted, experiencing struggle, learning hard work, and patience. So I feel like there is some sort of ego death here. Um, I feel like both energies were presented with the opportunity to have some sort of ego death or to heal something, to close out some sort of karmic cycle that may have been going on um, for a very long time or since childhood or even from lifetimes over here um, as this card indicates um, you know something in reference to things that may have happened in past life cycles okay um, so sacrificing those um, things that were restricting someone that could be um, I'm seeing eight of swords, so like eight of swords energy, kind of like uh, self-restricting with uh, mentally, mental imprisonment, uh, thinking about certain things, okay? Um, so coming up out of that, um, it being able, stepping into that and not being scared to do the shadow work and experience the struggle, learning how to do the hard work and being patient with not expecting an outcome, but just knowing that, you know, you got it. I just saw one, two, three, four on my timer. So yeah, that things are going in divine order and they're happening as they're supposed to happen and when they're supposed to happen here. Okay. So uh, nurturing your inner self, your, your inner child here. We have cardinal signs right here. So you or someone in your energetic field, um, high vibrational being that may be helping you with this uh, knowingly or unknowingly um, could be an Aries, um, Cancer, Libra, or Capricorn here. We have instigation, bravery, and a pioneering spirit. That is what cardinal signs represent. All right, so let me get the mutual energy right here. What's the mutual energy? Well, we see a lot of mutual energy going on here with 12th house, obviously, Cancer energy, <laughs> Capricorn energy, both sides with Saturn being right here and Saturn being right here with Capricorn. So just being free, being uh, brave enough to, with instigation being right here, I feel like to step into, instigate the control that maybe some someone's, um, this, this could even be parents or something like that, may have tried to have control over it. I, I feel like this has something to do with some sort of root work or spell work too as well. All right, so take it however it resonates. We have abundance here keep a positive mindset manifest exactly what you want gratitude and bliss coffee cup here meeting and conversing savoring the moment feeling uplifted friendship so i feel like maybe the non-karmic energy tried to manifest abundance off of the i mean the karmic energy tried to manifest abundance off of the non-karmic energy by um I don't know, maybe trying to come in with a, a, a mask on, you know, uh, wanting to meet up and converse, wanting to uh, make some sort of memories and um, just trying to get some sort of uh, uplifting or friendly type of energy off of this person. Um, maybe they thought that they were going to do this here with the sun. Sometimes the sun can can represent some sort of energy or energetic um, pull or or healing. Um, but in the karmic aspect of it, they are trying to assert some sort of dominance. Um, okay. But as the non-karmics are using this energy mutually, they're keeping a positive mindset. So these karmic energies can see that and they want to pull off of that. They want to draw off of that. They're trying to figure out a way that they can um, come together here. Look, karmic relationship to try to keep this karmic relationship going. So this is definitely mutual. 
both sides know that this is definitely a karmic relationship feeling triggers they're triggered by someone they are triggered by your happiness here non-karmics okay fleeting triggers turmoil resentment lessons letting go and loving you okay they have no choice but to let you go because you are sacrificing this karmic cycle okay uh, these people are considered karmic because they refuse to sacrifice the karmic cycle they actually feel more comfortable staying in that okay as this card indicates there is a reluctance to learn karmic lessons but as saturn over here indicates this is learning hard work and patience so learning your lessons okay sacrificial service sacrificing certain relationships no matter who they are setting up boundaries healthy boundaries all right we have clock right here all right so need time takes time in time cycles like i said time to heal progress so as the non-karmics progress and move on and close out these cycles and take time to heal and uh clear things that uh you know may have been a little bit hard to move on from you know ego death shadow work all that good stuff going on we have camera right here so both reminiscing keepsakes so some th these karmics may have access to the non-karmics uh some sort of like uh photos or social media these could be actual physical photographs or social media where they can look at this person look at this person's photos or something like that but they're reminiscing all right or they have some old photos uh, keepsake perception um, learning from the past and making memories all right like I said they are trying to come in um, and almost like relive the past um, bring up past uh, memories of feeling happy because you know there are that's why this is a karmic relationship because you are supposed to learn karmic means nothing but learning lessons okay um you know and when i mean it in this aspect this is like um in a negative aspect and in a positive aspect actually learning these lessons so they're not karmic and going through the same lessons over and over and over again someone something could be significant about feathers here there's feathers right here and i've been seeing feathers a lot also owls um as well so wisdom someone could have a saturn in sixth house or virgo all right all right let me get some um tarot here and let's see i could get a couple cards let's see what's going on here all right we have the eight of wands here like i said energy projection uh, wanting to talk, wanting to converse, but there's also uh, Sagittarius energy right here, Six of Swords here, wanting to move forward. It's almost like wanting to smooth talk into going into karma waters, but it's not like that. Almost trying to convince someone that they have uh, healed or leveled up or done something like uh, swiftly or real fast. It's like real fast talk. Real fast talk. All right. But they're being urged to move on. But this also right here, Six of Swords, is almost like as well um this could be um like riding past someone's house like in the evening times or something like that we have ace of wands here why the ace of wands like i said wanted to start something new but they were blocked king of wands here aries leo sagittarius sagittarius energy right here definitely what we got on the non comic side? Four of Cups right here. That's meditation. That's moving forward. That's healing. Like I said, maybe in the past there may have been a little bit of a reluctance to believe that one or more of the people who are involved in this over here, this is a lot of gossip as well. Um, yeah reluctance to believe who was involved in that okay in denial in the past but moving forward from that like i said having some sort of ego death like you know what i can't be so caught up in the title of who this person is to not believe yeah three of wands um that's contemplating on moving forward um 
looking out into your future, um, seeing things coming in for you. Um, you know, as you make your decisions, as you meditate, as you heal. And being able to pick out which journey is better or best. All right. Yes. I said the lovers right here. That's a clear cut decision, a choice. Gemini, Aries, uh, Cancer energy right here. So you and someone, Gemini, Virgo right here. And I picked up Virgo right here with the owl. All right. So definitely the ability to make great choices and manifest what you want in your life. The lover's card here is uh, Archangel Raphael, heart chakra healing or heart healing. This could be partnership, um, a love, a lover. Uh, th this also represents uh, siblings as well. The Ace of Pentacles. <laughs> the wheel, closing out cycles. New beginning. See, look, their new beginning is Ace of Wands. They got a lot of work that they need to do. Wands are about action, passion, putting in the work, doing something, things that are happening fast, okay? They wanted to have some sort of like quick start, okay? They remember maybe in the past when you may have been naive enough to fall for the, the quick talking or the fast talk or whatever it is before, um, but it's almost like you kind of like stop somebody in their tracks. Uh, what do we have behind here? Yeah, tower. Yeah, three of swords. Someone was going to probably try to come in. I feel, ooh, ace of swords. Someone was going to try to come in and try to, I don't know, like, I guess hurt you with some sort of truth or something like that. Um, but you already healed from something. This is something that somebody has done over and over again or for someone over and over again with the nine of wands here, Sagittarius energy. That's also like very obsessive or compulsive type of energy. Yeah, chaos and conflict and domination magic. That's exactly what it was. Trying to put in place blockages. Um, yeah, justice, but justice was served. Justice is also karma. So karmic justice here with justice and the wheel of fortune. Yeah, so karmic justice has been served here, especially with Saturn being on both sides, 12th house being on both sides. Those also represent the wheel or karmic justice. So definitely karmic justice has been served. Um, With this keepsake here, it's almost like they psych themselves into having the perception of, yeah, this person will definitely accept me back. Like, how could they not? I haven't done anything to this person, so to speak, or this person doesn't know or they can't say. But it's, you know, someone was given the choice or the option. When you give someone the option that is high vibrational or non-karmic or who has gone through these lessons before or closed out these chapters before, they're always going to choose the best option, what option is for them what they can see as most fulfilling or prosperous for their future. Someone has manifested uh, some sort of abundance or great fortune. This right here could also be some sort of business opportunity, I heard. Okay, so someone may have wanted to set up some sort of meeting with some sort of false business or, or false start and make, try to make someone have another false start. With a king of wands, not an emperor. Yep, Ten of Pentacles. Ooh, this could even be family. Like I said, this could have something definitely to do with abundance, all right? Queen of Pentacles, whoa. Virgo and energy. Energy on the non-karmic side over here, all right? That could also be Capricornian energy. We did see that right here with the uh, cardinal signs. So someone could have some sort of uh, prominent Capricorn placement as well. All right, or Midhaven, as I was speaking of earlier, Virgo. It could be a Virgo. Check your Saturn placement and six house placements. Okay, nine of Pentacles. All right, so that's definitely some sort of uh, success completion. We have King of Cups here. When I cut the deck, so we have the King of Cups on this side, and the King of Wands on this side. So this right here is true love, the best opportunity. Page of Pentacles. Page of Cups, Preparation, Queen of Wands over here. So this right here, if the Queen of Wands is over here on the non-karmic side, that definitely means that these two, this was a karmic relationship, Twin Flame. 
like I said, this could be sibling or non-sibling. This could be business. This could be friendship. This could be community. Anything like that. That Ten of Pentacles could have meant, you know, any large group of people. All right. But either way, someone was definitely already prepared in the past to move on and to move forward. And someone was also prepared to offer some sort of, um, I don't know if this here is like a, an apology or some sort of, um, someone's making someone some sort of offer. Okay. Yeah, we have a lot of pages over here. Someone wants to learn. I'm hearing teach me. I'm hearing the song teach me how to love, but I'm intuitively feeling that as like teach me how to use my gifts. Or something like that or teach me how to do what you do or something someone wants to pay somebody to teach them how to do something but it's also some sort of collaboration yeah six of Pentacles right here that's putting someone on the payroll and ten of Pentacles it's gonna be lucrative ten of Pentacles and ten of cups right behind that this is some sort of influencer here too because the devil is upright in this deck it's not in a negative aspect this deck is the deck of the oppositions tarot of oppositions upright is positive reverse is negative and all of these are upright positive so ten of pentacles ten of cups this is definitely going to be something that's going to be very 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 uh lucrative something that's going to live on that's going to create some sort of legacy and that has been created out of some sort of legacy here with the ladybugs being right here in the ten of cups that's some sort of bloodline all right. I'm hearing it's that bloodline on the front line ready for war. So somebody's bloodline there or something, something about somebody's bloodline definitely helped them here. Okay. 10, 10, 10, 10 of swords. Yeah. And we got the king and queen of cups on this side. Thank you. So king and queen of cups on this side, king and queen of wands on opposing sides. So that was definitely a twin flame karmic relationship that you uh, moved away from. And um, coming together is some sort of a soulmate situation here. All right. If nobody told y'all today, I'm going to tell you. I love you.